Watson. Watson? Oh, sorry, Stanford. Miles away. <laughs> well, drag yourself back, old man. This is a party. Sorry. At least it's supposed to be. The ever so official St. Bartholomew's Teaching Hospital New Year Celebratory Dinner. <laughs> How's your glass? Be midnight soon. Oh, I'm all right. Good stuff. Oh, by the way, mm -hmm. I've got a favor to ask you. Oh, I knew I'd been invited here for a reason. <laughs> Go on. I've been saddled with next year's Abernethy Lecture. You? Oh, relax. I'm not giving it. I'm arranging it. Ah. Uh, so, what do you say? Stanford, I haven't worked as a doctor for years. Doesn't matter. I want to make the old Abernethy a bit different. Give it a bit more zing. Romance, mystery. Oh, yes. You could read a few bits from your stories, chat for a while. You know the sort of thing. Mm, that's a thought, I suppose. I mean, you're always going on about how he's more popular than ever now. It's true. I can't turn out the stories fast enough. So, will you do it? It's not for months yet. You've got loads of time to put something together. <sighs> I'll think about it. Good man. Ah, here we go. Happy New Year, old man. And to you. Here's to 1914. His Last Bow by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Dramatized for radio by Bert Cools. With Clive Medicine as Sherlock Holmes and Michael Williams as Dr. John Watson. And featuring Norman Rodway as Stamford and Michael Cochran as Captain Kell. His last bow. Very impressive. That's what you're paying for. Come on, we got three minutes. I'm not a shred of damage in here. You live up to your reputation, Mr. Altamont. Keep your voice down. Will you look at this? There must be a dozen boxes of them. Put it back. We could send these over. Every little helps. Toys. Now, these are what we came for. Thanks, old man. My pleasure. Well, no need to ask if you enjoyed that. <laughs> now, Dr. Watson has kindly agreed to answer any questions. Yes? How is Mr. Holmes, Dr. Watson? Is he well? The last time I saw him, he was very well. The country air agrees with him. Uh, yes? Uh, why did Mr. Holmes retire so young? That's a question you'd have to ask him. How? No one knows where he's gone. Then you can deduce <laughs> that he values his privacy, can't you? Does he really keep bees? Yes, he does. He told me he's writing a book on the subject. He's probably finished it by now. Look out for it, if you're interested. Yes? Uh, at the side there. Is it true that he'll never do any more detective work? <laughs> Never's a long time. <laughs> Will he be taking any active part in the war? Are you so sure there's going to be a war? Well, yes, of course. Yes. How many of you think that war is inevitable? Put up your hands. And how many of you want a war? And how many of you know the least thing about what war is actually like? Yes, well, when you've got first-hand knowledge of the subject, then I'll discuss it with you, if you're still alive. Ah, uh, sorry, Stanford. Not a bit of it. I said I wanted some zing, didn't I? <laughs> Here. Thanks. Good health. Yes. Ah, I shouldn't have got angry. And I worse than everybody else, after all. War fever. It's understandable, I suppose. Nothing but bad news out of Europe day after day. People want to see the Kaiser put in his place. Put in his place? Oh, you make it sound like some student prank. If we do go in, it'll be appalling. You think so? Oh, good God, don't you? <sighs> Thanks again for doing this. Ah, I enjoyed it. So did they. Yeah. Strange to think that those lads weren't even born when you first introduced me to Holmes. 
John. Why don't you get back in touch with him again? No, I can't do that. Of course you can. Go and see him. He'd be delighted. Stanford, when he retired, he asked me to respect his privacy. That's what I've done. Well, I think you've carried it a bit far. He asked me down once. He'll do it again. He asked you down once. Look, if you really want to know the truth, I'll tell you. Go on. This retirement, I don't think it'll last. You know what he's like. His work was his life. He can't just give it up. Not to study bees, for God's sake. You think so? Of course. John, how long is it since you've seen him? Ten years. But I tell you, it's only a matter of time. Wait. Mr. Altamont? Don't use new nails. Reuse the old ones. Or you might as well paint smuggled rifles in secret compartment on the side of the crate. Use your brain, man. He's only a lad. He's fighting a war, O'Brien. That makes him a man. There's someone downstairs asking for you. Who? Well, now, he didn't give his name. But if it were me he was wanting, I wouldn't keep him waiting. Good evening, Doc. Ah, Stevens. Dr. Stanford in the club tonight? Yes, sir. Splendid. Oh, thanks. Stanford! Watson! Whiskey and soda, please, George. Oh, you're in a sunny mood. Look at that. Wait. Ah, good stuff. Meet me, Grand Hotel Harwich, lunchtime tomorrow. <sighs> Bring with you one large suitcase. <clears throat> also bring your new motor car. <sighs> Thank you. Watson. Holmes. It's good to see you. How have the years used you? I feel 20 years younger. You've hardly changed. How are you? I believe I'm well. You look it. Holmes, what's happening? Did you bring the car? How did you know about that? I'll tell you later. Tell you later. Hmm. You know, I'd have put money on those words cropping up inside five minutes. Still a betting man then, Doctor? Only on certainties. Very wise. Holmes. Tell me what's going on. After lunch, oh, a brandy, a cigar, and a good long talk. What do you say? So, you are the celebrated Altamont. And just who the hell are you? That really doesn't matter. I'm too busy for games. Hmm. Preparing to dispatch four crates of stolen rifles to your friends in Ireland. Yes, I know. Oh, put the gun away, sir. It really doesn't frighten me. What do you want? I want to do the job I came here to do, then get out of this rat hole of a town. Buffalo. I suppose they named it for the smell. You want to go? Go. That ought to take care of the problem. Your full name is Altamont B. and Kelly, though you never use it. Your parents were forced out of Ireland when you were two years old, and you were brought up in Chicago. You have your mother's brains and your father's hatred of all things English. What the hell is this? You have many useful skills. You also have a fondness for good living and expensive wine. Your services can be bought at a price. You know a good deal about me. Hmm, it is my business. A colleague of mine wishes to meet you. He wants to offer you a job. One you'll enjoy. Ah.
splendid meal. Yeah. Surprisingly good. Yes. So, how was your retirement? <laughs> you know, I knew it wouldn't last. Mm. Watson. This really is just like the old days. You didn't mind. Mind? I've been expecting it. Yes, I thought you might have been. Burying yourself away like that. <laughs> it just wasn't you. The dance begins. The messages are passed. I have found food. North, northeast. Closer than a fifty yards. Pollen. <laughs> Fascinating. Mr. Holmes, sir. <laughs> By the hives. <clears throat> Just a moment. And the coast is clear, Martha. The enemy is contained. Thank you, sir. Your tea is on the table, sir. Uh, hey. Thank you, very good. Mm. Mr. Holmes? Mm, yes? It is generally accepted that tea tastes best when it's still hot. Ah, good old Martha. How is she? Rather enjoying life, just at the moment. I'm pleased to hear it. Did she ever learn to love your bees? I'm afraid not. <laughs> you and those bees. You and those bees. I'd have thought by now you'd have learnt every blessed thing about them there is to know. Uh, I've done no more than scratch the surface, Martha. A man could spend his whole life. Yes. Well, a man would find his tea had gone cold at the end of it. His whole life. And they'd still have their secrets. Oh. Secrets, is it? They'd be teased out and solved and classified. Order out of chaos, Martha. Sense out of mystery. Miss the old days, do you, sir? Uh, these are the only gangs I care to watch now. No. I miss nothing. What the devil? Who can it be? And how did they find me? Perhaps they're not looking for you, sir. They're looking for me. I'll be in my study. Get rid of them. <clears throat> yes? Mr. Holmes, sir. Martha, have they gone? No, sir. They have not. Good morning, Prime Minister. Good morning, Mr. Holmes. Who told you where I was? It wasn't Watson. Quite correct. Mycroft. Of course. He had my strictest instructions. <laughs> uh, so, Martha, some tea for the right honourable gentleman. Uh, we'll take it on the lawn. Ah, and an extra cup for Viscount Grey of Falloden. Pray come in, Foreign Secretary. Hiding in the hallway doesn't befit the dignity of your office. Good morning, Mr Holmes. Well, oh. hmm? sit down, sit down. Uh, sir, sir, gentlemen. What brings you to my humble home? That's one hell of a way to go for a job interview. You'll be met at the other end. We shall not see each other again. I can hardly hold back the tears. I suppose you uh, wouldn't care to tell me exactly what line he's in, your colleague. My dear Altamont, if you're good enough for the job, you should have worked that out for yourself by now. Well, perhaps I might just have. Spies. German spies, sir. Enemy agents operating in this country. I am familiar with the definition of the word, Prime Minister. An organized ring of experienced men, supported by money and by cunning. And controlled by a single individual who masterminds their every operation. Gentlemen... You must be aware, sir, that the situation in Europe isn't exactly stable. I have no interest in politics. But do you also have no interest in the welfare of your country? 
Foreign Secretary, my services to England have not been inconsiderable. Mr. Holmes, the possibility of a European war is a very real one. Germany's expansionist policy is troubling a good many people. Every damn military secret we possess seems to be common knowledge in Berlin. And there's nothing we can do about it. Why have you come to me? Well, surely that is obvious. To you, perhaps. Mr. Holmes, kindly don't play games with us. We require you to track down the leader of this organization and put a stop to his activities. You will start immediately. Will I indeed? <sighs> Mr. Holmes, what's wrong? If it's a question of remuneration, I... <sighs> I don't believe you've offered me any proof. Proof, sir? I would have hoped that our word was good enough. I fear not. You didn't believe them. That's what I said. They would hardly have come to you in person if they weren't sure. Your opinion of politicians always was rather higher than mine. My opinion of practically everybody was always higher than yours. But I'd have thought even you would have taken the word of the Premier of England. What about the case of the second stain? The second... Watson, when will you ever learn that your ludicrous titles convey nothing to me? Oh, that's not true either. The second stain, Lady Hilda Trelawney Hope. The lost letter that could have started a war. Mm, what of it? We had the PM and the Foreign Secretary then too. Both of them in the sitting room at Baker Street. I don't recall you demanding any proof before you agreed to take that case. It wasn't necessary. And this time it was. What was different, for God's sake? Ah, Mr. Holmes. Mr. Rasquith. If this is your attitude, perhaps you'd care to meet the head of our counterintelligence department. It's possible that he may convince you where we have failed. His name is Vernon Kell. A first-class man, impeccable military career. A soldier. Oh, he's retired from the service. Now he works in close collaboration with Scotland Yard. Then he has my sympathy. You'll meet him? I have little patience with a military mind. Mr. Holmes, Kell was never a typical army man. He speaks seven languages, has an enormous range of interests, and has travelled widely in the Far East. A man after your own heart, sir. We can have him here by late afternoon. He's in London. He is. Then I shall go and see him there. You went to London? Watson, I've just said that I did. You tell poor old Martha to turn away the Prime Minister and Lord Grey because you won't see anybody, and then you promptly go up to London with them to talk to a man you'd never heard of. I had my reasons. Mr. Holmes. Captain Cole. I can't tell you what a pleasure this is. Thank you for agreeing to see me. Mr. Holmes has been informed of the situation, Kell. And you don't believe a word of it, sir, I'm told. Well, it's a capital mistake to commit oneself to anything before being in possession, possession of all the facts, yes. I've read the good doctor's stories. Indeed. And every word you've ever published. You've read my monographs. Believe it. Your handbook on codes and ciphers taught me everything I know on the subject. Well, it's at least 15 years out of date. Time to write a new one, then, isn't it? Captain Kell, may we return to business? Patience, my lord. Nothing is irrelevant to the inquiring mind, eh, Mr. Holmes? Yes, yeah, so it's been said. Uh, tell me about your spymaster. Spymaster? I like that. Spymaster. Kell, for pity's sake. Well, the gentleman in question has been at work for at least two years. Over that period, things have been, well, going wrong. Yes, I've been provided with a list. Agents compromised, papers intercepted, plans circulated abroad. I saw no evidence of any mastermind at work. Now, those are just the broad strokes. It's in the details. All the incidents have elements in common, a unifying touch, a, a style. There is a power, a deep organising power at work, Mr Holmes. I can feel it. I'm sure I don't need to remind you, Mr Holmes of the enemy you defeated in 1891? Correct, sir. You do not. And I did recognize my own words, Captain. A distinct touch. A deep, organizing power. Mm. Another Moriarty. Ah, my dear Altamont. Such a pleasure. Welcome to England. 
Another Moriarty. Mm, no wonder they came to you. That was a lifetime ago. No, Holmes. Just a few years. A lifetime. I like the sound of this Kell chap. Because he's read all your books? Mm, yours too. Did he look at his evidence? Oh, yes. And? I agree with you. A central controller is operating an elite espionage ring in this country. As we told you from the beginning. Well, how can we flash this man out into the open? You can't. You're saying there's nothing we can do? I'm saying nothing of the kind, but you'll never flush him out. Not directly. Indirectly, then. As it might be possible. How long would it take? <sighs> My dear Foreign Secretary, we're not discussing a railway journey. There's no timetable involved. It will take as long as it takes. So, Mr. Holmes, whatever resources you require will be made available to you. Naturally, you'll have an unlimited budget. Now, when can you start your investigation? Mr. Holmes, what's wrong? You said no, didn't you? You turned them down. Watson, you never cease to amaze me. Am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. Ah, I knew you were leading up to something. We're not at the end of the story yet. No. No, I can see that we're not. Holmes, why? Why did you refuse? Because I didn't think I could do it. You turned them down because you were afraid of failing? It was too important. The smallest slip in the investigation, and he would have known about it. The entire network would have been reorganized. It would have set everything back years. And you truly thought you couldn't do it? Holmes, were you ill? No, I was in excellent health. Oh, your mind's as sharp as it's ever been. I don't understand why you had any doubts. Because times change, Doctor. Times change, and the world changes with them. Uh, Mr. Holmes, uh, wait. I didn't think I'd catch you. Well, why did you try? Give me ten minutes of your time. Kel, there really isn't any point. You were surprised that I went to London. You said you needed proof. A lie. A bluff. As you realized. Then what was the real reason? It was a test. I used to be more at home in London than anywhere else in the world. I knew its every mood. There were times when I felt that not a single thing could happen in the entire city without me being aware of it. And? It had all gone. The place had changed more than I would have thought possible. The place, the people, everything. And not just London. <laughs> it's not my world anymore. I'm an anachronism, Watson. A precision instrument on a mass-produced planet. I come here sometimes when I'm trying to work things out. I like watching the ducks. <laughs> Damn silly, don't you think? Thanks for agreeing to talk. I'm not entirely sure why I did. I don't believe you. They were very angry. They had no right to take me for granted. I've retired. They knew that. You know, I've, I've wondered for years about your retirement. You weren't old. You were, what, 50? 49. So why should a man at the peak of his powers suddenly just give it all up? There was still work to be done. Perhaps I wasn't the right person to do it. Not anymore. My God. This dates back as far as that. Those last few cases. I was slow. I was stupid. No. Watson, it was time to stop. Did you explain all this to Kel? I didn't need to. He worked it out for himself. Congratulations. An excellent piece of deduction. I told you. I learned everything I know from you. You were wrong, of course. About the world? About yourself. You're unique. Whatever happens to the world, nothing can change that. Your experience, your knowledge. We've got no one else who even begins to come close. Look, this war, I, I don't know, it, maybe this year, maybe next. 
but this I do know. It'll be like nothing we've ever seen before. There have always been wars. Look, Holmes, I know what I'm talking about. The Germans are working on weapons that'll make our present stuff seem like toys. This war won't be a gentlemanly disagreement played out by rules. It'll be a devastation. A carnage. You can't be saying that my coming back will stop a war. No, I'm not saying that. Well then? I'm saying that getting rid of the German spinet could help tip the scales in our favor. The war might be shorter. The losses might be fewer. And I'm saying that the Sherlock Holmes I know isn't capable of just turning his back and walking away from that. I wish I could meet that man. Oh, you'd like him. You have a good deal in common. You took the case. I did. A twist in the tail. I thought he'd appreciate it. Thank you for telling me. There was no need. Yes, there was. So, how does the story end? I don't know yet. So it isn't over? <laughs> As you hoped. Of course. But I'm only sorry I couldn't tell you about it well before now. You'll understand why later. Later, yeah. How long's it been going on, then? Almost two years. Two years? But even the longest tales reach their climax eventually, as your readers are doubtless gratefully aware. And are we heading for a happy ending? Mm, let's hope so. Come on. It's time for the final chapter. Look at that sunset. Like an open wound cutting the sky in two. Inspiring. I had no idea he was such a poet. <laughs> One of my many talents. <laughs> You'll probably be back home within the week. Indeed. Oh, yes. Matters are at ahead. You'll travel as a member of the embassy staff. It's all arranged. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, what lights are those? Harridge. It's a naval dockyard. Uh, still and peaceful, it all seems. There may be other lights within the week. You know, of course, that they are not in the least ready. It is hard to believe. Inconceivable. I suppose you are sure. Oh, yes, thanks to the information from your little treasure. <laughs> I've never shown you my collection, have I? No. Step inside for a moment, please. Oh, yes. <laughs> Very fine. I have Altamont to thank for most of it. Ah, the celebrated Altamont. No, yeah, he's expensive, but worth every penny. I do admire organization. Yeah. Everything neatly classified. Harbour defences. Aeroplate. <laughs> Ireland. The Channel. Rosside. Excellent. Thank you. Of course, these are mostly originals. Too delicate to send abroad. The copies were every bit as welcome. Good. Good. My collection still lacks its crowning glory. Indeed? What would you say is England's greatest strength? Their navy. <laughs> they control the waters, on the surface at least. Suppose we could anticipate the movements. What are you saying? The Admiralty has just totally revised its signal codes. Some for Marconi lamps, written orders, everything. And? A copy of the new code book will be delivered here at ten o'clock. Tonight. My dear von Bork. Altamont? Altamont. So, were you right? Your old methods were no use anymore? Uh, to a large extent. Have you had any luck at all? Oh, yes. I know the man's name. Well, that's splendid. Uh, you probably heard of him. How the devil could I know a German spy chief? Siegfried von Bock. The sportsman? Yes. But he's famous. 
I saw him at Olympia last year. He's the spy master. Uh, that's hard to believe. Exactly. He cultivates as public a face as possible, so no one suspects he might also have a private one. <laughs> There's genius in that. I should dearly love to meet him, this Altamont. <laughs> but I must go. I have already overstayed my time. As you wish. Well, how feel is he? Who is that in the front room? Uh, uh, only my housekeeper. She's the only servant I have left. British? <laughs> oh, yes. Would she have heard of? Uh, no, she's almost completely deaf. And besides, she's far more interested in her knitting and her cat than anything we've been saying. <laughs> Look at her. Completely wrapped up in herself and half asleep. England personified. <laughs> Von Bock? Baron. If all goes well, today we'll be Herr von Bork's last taste of liberty for a while. What's going to happen? Altamont's making a delivery tonight. Altamont? Ah, yes, his top man. Ah, so it's going to be two birds with one stone, is it? Uh, not exactly. Now look out! Oh, what the devil! Ah, ah. Damn fool nearly had us off the roof. I hardly saw him. No one should be able to go that fast. It was a hundred horsepower Benz. The latest type with a double carburetor. Maximum speed, 73 miles an hour. If you ask me, you seem to be adjusting to the new world extremely well. <laughs> Thank you, Doctor. Is that the house? Yes. What time is this Altamont character going to turn up? Very soon. <laughs> Punctual as ever, my friend. One moment. Did you get it? Yeah. Superb. Help yourself to a drink. Try the Tokai. It comes from the Emperor's own stock. A moment to remember. <gasps> what in hell's name is this? A practical handbook? Of bee culture. <laughs> 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 With some observations upon the segregation of the Queen. I'm sorry you didn't like it. Another glass, Watson. Mm, it's good wine, Holmes. Oh, yes, this is remarkable wine from Franz Joseph's personal cellar. <laughs> yes, according to our sleeping friend on the sofa. Yeah. Your very good health. Yeah, and yours. Mm. 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 Excellent, excellent. Now, I must say, chloroform vapor doesn't exactly help the palate. <laughs> you took a hell of a risk. Yes, well, it was necessary. No one else could get near him. Yes, I suppose so. But if he'd been the least bit suspicious. How long have you been Altamont, anyway? Uh, just over a year. Uh, but I've been trailing the real Altamont for a good six months before that. In America? Uh, Buffalo, New York. Mm. He'd built up quite a reputation for himself. Uh, blackmail, extortion, gun running, spying. <laughs> Jack of all trades. A master of the whole damn lot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's how he first came to our friend's attention. Von Bork was recruiting in America? No, uh, not personally. There are strong links between German military intelligence and some of the more radical Irish-American communities. They share a certain affection for England and the English. You thought that this Altamont would probably be approached. Yeah, and I was right. Oh, it worked out quite beautifully. One Altamont set sail from the United States, quite a different one walked off the ship in England. What happened to the original? 
No, he was gathered safely up into the welcoming arms of Captain Kell. Sheesh. I've been Von Bork's top man for nearly a year. For some reason, that time seen most of his plans going subtly wrong and five of his best agents ending up in prison. Oh, pretty good for an anachronism. Thank you. Uh, excuse me. <clears throat> what are you doing? Ringing for the housekeeper. Oh, Holmes, for pity's sake. We've just been sitting here as if we owned the place and there's someone else in the house. Oh, relax, Watson. Now, let's see what's in here. Holmes. Uh, come in. Martha. Good evening, Dr. Watson. It's good to see you again, sir. And you, Martha, you're looking well. But what in the world are you doing here? I'm Mr. Von Bork's housekeeper. And she has been since I got her the job 11 months ago. Good Lord. He's all right, Mr. Holmes, sir. No, he's not been hurt at all, Martha. Well, I'm glad of that. According to his lights, he's been a kind master. Uh, now, sir, he posted seven letters today. Here are the addresses, as usual. Hmm. Excellent. Hmm. Now, you can report to me tomorrow in London, Martha. Claridge's Hotel. Very good, sir. Good night, gentlemen. Good, good night. night. Holmes, how could you do that to her, for God's sake? Suppose he'd found out. Oh, there was no danger of that. I hope you're right. Yes, plans, letters, memos. Oh, this really is a remarkable collection. Not to mention a sizable one. <sighs> Astonishing. I hope you took me at my word and brought a large suitcase. Yes, I did. Holmes, how many of those papers were supplied by Altamont? Oh, a good many. Oh, they are, of course, thoroughly untrustworthy. <laughs> Uh, it would brighten my declining years to see a German cruiser navigating the Solent according to the minefield plans I furnished. Hmm. Holmes? That doesn't sound like you. Oh, he's coming right. Yes. Well, sir, I hope you're none the worse. The the Dobbiter Verräter. Ah, German's the most expressive of all languages. Uh, das reicht, mein athletischer Freund. And time, my hands. I don't think so. I shall get level with your Altamont. If it takes me all my life, I shall get level with you. Ah, the old sweet song. It was a favourite <laughs> ditty uh, of the late lamented Professor Moriarty. Yes, Colonel Sebastian Moran was known to warble it. Ah, yes. <laughs> and yet, I live and keep my bees. Who are you? It's really immaterial. Tell me. But since the matter seems to interest you, this is not my first acquaintance with the members of your family. I acted for the King of Bohemia against Irene Adler when your cousin Heinrich was the Imperial Envoy. I saved the life of Count von Grafenstein, who was your mother's eldest brother. I was responsible for... There the... is only one man. Exactly. All right, Watson. Uh, I really would advise you not to waste your energy. The more you struggle, the tighter those knots will get. Yes, yes, that's much more sensible. You are a private individual. You have no warrant for my arrest. This is absolutely illegal. Oh, absolutely. Kidnapping a German subject. And stealing his papers. I'm glad you realize your position. If I were to shout for help as we pass through the village... Yeah, you'd probably enlarge the limited titles of our village inns by giving us the dangling Prussian as a local landmark. The Englishman's a patient creature, sir. But at present, his temper's a little inflamed. It wouldn't be a good idea to tempt him too far. No, Herr von Bork, you'll go with us in a quiet, sensible fashion to Scotland Yard. Now, I beg that you'll excuse us for a few minutes. Watson, mm -hmm. come and stand with me on the terrace. It may be the last quiet talk that we shall ever have. Holmes? I'm glad you were able to be here. It wouldn't have been the same without you. Thank you. I wouldn't have missed it for the world. You know that. I know it. What are your plans? Ah, uh, I'm going to talk to my old regiment. See if there isn't something I can help out with. I don't know. Medical training. Something. 
I want to do my bit. Of course. But what about you? More work for the government, I suppose, after this triumph? I don't believe so. Holmes? You said earlier that you knew I was leading up to something. You mean there's still another twist? And I'm supposed to be the writer? Well, you needn't fear the competition. I'm laying down my pen. For good, this time. Why, Holmes? You still have so much to offer. This business proves it. No, Doctor. I was right. It's time to stand aside. There's a new age coming. I don't belong in it. I'm sorry, Watson. Well, if it's what you want. Yes, it is. So this is it then? This really is the end? Yes. It really is. The end of an era. I should be taking notes for posterity. Mm, or at least for one of your romantic embellishments of real life. It's what people want. What they expect, perhaps. Not necessarily the same thing. It's what they want. The case is over. The villain's captured. And the two of us are left alone together. The brilliant detective and his slightly slow friend. <laughs> You never do yourself justice in those stories. You know that, don't you? I've told you before. I'm there for contrast. To bring things down to earth occasionally. Well, I'm glad to have known the genuine article. Thank you. There's an east wind coming, Watson. I don't think so, Holmes. It's very warm. <laughs> Good old Watson. You're the one fixed point in a changing age. <laughs> there is an east wind coming, all the same. Yes. It'll be cold and bitter, and a good many of us may wither before its blast. Holmes. But perhaps a better land will lie in the sunshine when the storm's cleared. Come on, my friend. Time. We were on our way. In His Last Bow, Sherlock Holmes was played by Clive Medicine and Dr. Watson by Michael Williams. With Michael Cochran as Captain Kell and Norman Rodway as Stamford. The Prime Minister was played by Preston Lockwood. The Foreign Secretary by Donald Pickering. Von Bork by James Telfer. Von Herling by Colin Pinney. Martha by Lala Lloyd. Altamont by Bob Sherman. The Agent by Ed Bishop, O'Brien by Eamon Fleming, and The First Student by Ben Lamell. Other parts were played by members of the cast. The violinist was Leonard Friedman. His Last Bow was dramatised for radio by Bert Cools and directed by Enid Williams. <laughs>